Hi, my name is Evgenia Snuffer and I'm a recipient of the Innovative ETD Awards from the Network Digital Library of Theses and Dissertations. I feel very, very honored to receive this award and I wish I could be in Hong Kong to celebrate it with you. But because I cannot, I'm just going to use this opportunity to say all my thank yous and talk a little bit about my research. I wish to thank my advisors, Dr. Susan Allen and Dr. Jan Masson, without whom this project would not have been possible. I wish to thank Dr. Tony Farrell for his um, contribution as, to my committee, as my committee member. I wish to thank Dr. Doug Hay and uh, Bruce McCarter for their help with Herring Larvae. And I also wish to thank Max Reed, who nominated my thesis for this award. For my master's project, I, sell, I simulated tracks of Herring Larvae in the Strait of Georgia, located on the west coast of Canada, between Vancouver Island and mainland. Herring larvae are dependent on the ocean currents to bring them to the areas with enough food to survive them, to, to allow them to survive and grow. Because they generally stay near the surface, wind is the main driver which determines larval transport paths in the Strait of Georgia. If strong winds blow to the north during the hatching period, herring larvae will be washed out of the strait, leading to poor stock recru recruitment later. Alternatively, if the winds blow predominantly to the south, then most of the larvae will stay in the strait. By identifying the key spawning grounds and retention areas and protecting them, we maintain productive fisheries and growth of the, and growth of the tourism industry and recreational fishing because herring serves as food not only to humans, but also to salmon, dolphins, and humpback whales. Herring migrate into the Strait of Georgia in October November to spend the winter and spawn in spring. Herring spawns on vegetation in, shelter, in sheltered areas and eggs stick to the vegetation such as seagrass. Larvae hatch after about two weeks and they float at the surface for the first six days. After that, they start swimming deeper during the day to escape predators and stay at the surface at night to feed. Because young larvae cannot outswim the water currents, uh, larvae rely on the ocean currents to bring them to the areas with food to sustain them. In the Strait of Georgia, wind has the most influence on larval dispersal. During the winter, winds blow predominantly to the south and during the summer, to the north. Spring is the shoulder season and the winds blow either direction. In 2007, the winds blew predominantly to the north and washed out the larvae from the strait, which explained the poor stock return uh, later. In 2009, the opposite happened. The wind blew to the south and the larvae got retained in the strait. Since the winds are not constant, we should expect that the larval distribution in the strait will change from year to year, which has implications for management strategies such as determining fishing quotas. I used the video supplementing my thesis to show the larvae tracks simulated in three different years and representing the annual variability in their dispersal. The ocean fascinates me. My master's project allowed me to, to apply my computer, computer skills to resolve real oceanography problems. I feel like this project helped finding the next piece of the puzzle.